Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Friday afternoon edition of the PHLY Eagles podcast. Bo Wolf, Zach Berman, 48 hours ish away from week six, Eagles Jets. You know, soaking up the uh, the feeling in the city, Zach, as the Phillies are headed to the NLCS. We've got a lot of news to get to, a lot of injuries for the Eagles that have changed over the course of the week. So we'll talk about that. We're going to hear from Zach Rosenblatt from The Athletic, who covers the Jets. Give us a little uh, peek behind the curtain there. Talk maybe some Joe Douglas and like pharmaceutical opinions and stuff like that. I'll let you ask the pharmaceutical questions. Sounds good. Uh, we will have Goose Wisely, another oh, edition. To that. We'll close with our crystal ball eagle predictions. But how are you? Doing great. Excited for the show. I uh, love this time of year in Philly. You got all four sports going. Mm. Okay. The uh, weather, perfect right now. The weather is great. You got big time college football on Saturdays. You got your you got Penn State UMass <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> um, but there is, th- this is this is just such a fun time of year. I remember as a kid, I loved this time of year. Now the Phillies wouldn't make the postseason at that you know, you know during that time post ninety three. It was uh it was pretty bare, but you know when the Sixers were starting, the Flyers were starting, and the Eagles were rolling. Yeah, th- this is a great time. Pretty bare, just like uh, you in the back seat of a car changing. Just like that. <laughs> yes, just like that. Uh, what did you think of the game last night? And what did you think of which game? Like Fletcher Cox's <laughs> uh, role in the in the clubhouse celebration. Well, I thought the game was awesome. Right. I well, I should ask you. You were there. Had a great time. Yeah. Got to go with. What was uh, the atmosphere like? Got to go with Rachel. Uh, fantastic atmosphere. Loved it. Uh, great view of the the Rojas catch, mm. which was which was awesome. Uh, our friend Tom's daughter Olivia predicted the Castellanos, the first of the two home runs. Great job by her. Fantastic. Nice. And uh, well, yeah, we had a great time. A little bit, I would say, a little bit tired when I woke up this morning. When 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 Jane was uh, you know, making noise, it's a well deserved five fifty. Well, it's yes. a well deserved tired, but this yes. is my second Celsius of the day. Okay. So, you know, gotta gotta keep the engine going. Uh, I, I guess did you eat at the ballpark or? I did. Uh, we had. Okay. She had a hot dog. I had like the, the chicken fingers and fries, which were not very That's good. That's what you had. Well, last when There's I went last so week, I, went, I last week I got dog and sausage. Okay. But. I don't know. It was okay. had some pizza beforehand. Okay, so you double dipped. Well, yeah, it yeah. was a long night. Uh, you got to balance out the drinking. Speak to the uh, people around you. I mean, this is probably <laughs> the difference between you and me at a baseball game. I don't view it as an interview opportunity <laughs> to like find out what everybody yeah. around me thinks. I'm generally so, more watching the game, talking to the people I know. I'm actually, I'm, I am, I am envious post game. Because I always have questions. I actually want to chip in and help with Philly's coverage because I, I, I always there's so many things I, I want. We to were know. definitely like baffled by what the bullpen decisions were. Okay, like you know, like are they is is Zach Wheeler going to throw the ninth? What's going on here? Where's cousin Jeff? But you yeah. know, credit to Topper, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our our former colleague Matt Gale is probably getting sick of my text because I'm I'm just uh, I doing a bang up job. Yeah, but. Uh, no, it was, it was it was a great game to watch. I actually did not flip much to the Chiefs Broncos game. I flipped some because I'm a football writer and a football fan. And I mean, I feel like it's 2023. You you should have the ability to go like double screens. Well, YouTube TV does have the right the uh, the, uh, the double screen capability. Or you put it on but your I, laptop or something. I mean, I was I was working actually last night. So when are you not working, Zach? <laughs> oh, you sound like my wife right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, I yeah, feel like that's funny. happening more and more that I sound like your wife. It is happening more and more. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> that's why we're moving a little bit closer together. <laughs> not, not too close. Um, I, you know, I, have been, I, I haven't uh, fully baked this take, but I think I'm, I'm sort of workshopping something about how, like, there's a lesson for the Eagles in this Philly season, right? Like, both teams got very close to the mountaintop last year. Okay. Um, and you then... When that happens, you enter the next season with, like, you know, it's that or bust to some degree, mm-hmm. and it's probably more so the case for the Eagles than it was for the Phillies. You know, that Philly season was was last year's season was much more of a surprise, and they weren't like the dominant team throughout the year like the Eagles were. But it does seem like like this year's Phillies team has, like, they they played the season with the playoffs in mind, right? There was yes. there was some um, like injury conservatism. 
thinking of the big picture instead of the the short picture. I think the Eagles are are doing that right now, and we can talk about that from the injury front. They've also sort of like uh, leaned in a little bit to like their own personality a little bit. Mm. I feels like, and yeah. and it seems like the Eagles are uh, they were maybe fighting that a little bit in the beginning of the season, and yeah. and they're maybe leaning a little bit more into it now. I don't know. I don't, that's a good theory. I got I got I got I got to find like the real thesis of this thing, but I just I think there's an interesting connection. I think that'd be a good column on on all PHL. Stop giving me work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I I think there's there's validity to that. And, and one thing I talked about during the summer quite a bit and and I, I wrote about it before the season was there can sometimes be this tendency to like fast forward to January and February if you're an Eagles fan. And I, I think the same thing for the Phillies. It was like, all right, yeah, well, let's see what happens in October, right? Because they were a team that's built for October, number one. But but number two, it, it was like you, you can't really get that excited about a July game in Pittsburgh when the stakes of your season are that much higher. And that's kind of the way it is with the Eagles, right? Is is like they're graded on this threshold right. of what are you going to do in the postseason. Yeah, and I think that's right. And it's it's sort of related to a game this week when – it feels like it's sort of a sleepy matchup against a Jets team that has never beaten the Eagles ever, and they don't. That's have your their, favorite stat. It, yeah. I, it's a great stat. Yes, it's unbelievable. That's one of those that if you ask Nick Sirianni, I can give you Nick Sirianni's answer. I wasn't there for for those games, so they don't matter to me. Yeah, but there's a lot of things where if I could give you the question, you could give me Nick Sirianni's That's answer true. probably. That's true. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, what are the the yeah. injury updates? Because there have been a lot. Since we last spoke, yes, and it seems as if the Eagles will be shorthanded on defense. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm glad you asked. Although I knew you were, you were going to ask. <laughs> uh, a big development yesterday was Jalen Carter was added to the injury report. He was injured in Wednesday's practice. Okay, uh, injured his ankle Wednesday's practice and did not practice the past two days. And now it does not appear he's going to play. Uh, on Sunday against the Jets, so and we'll, and this is to the point of our just our recent discussion. Nor should he play, right? Like, you need Jalen Carter. Yeah, you want him healthy. One of your yep. best players to be healthy down the stretch. Don't take any chances. Uh, Darius Slay has a, a, a knee injury. Sounds like he's not going to play. Did not practice at all this week. Nick Sirianni does not expect either of those injuries to be long term injuries, but it doesn't look like either one is uh, is going to play. Justin Evans hasn't been at practice. So I imagine he won't play. We'll get the final injury report in a bit. What about Evan Justins? I'm not familiar with Evan Justins. Okay. Uh, uh, Marlon Tupelotu uh, was back at practice on a limited basis. Uh, Jack Stoll was added to the injury report with a shoulder injury. Sydney, uh, uh, Sydney Brown was limited. N'Kobe Dean is progressing to play. Fletcher Cox, it appears he's going to play. A new one, this was according to Ian Rappaport um, from NFL Network, that it seems Quez Watkins injured his hamstring today and uh, Quez has been dealing with the hamstring. Right. So that's obviously not a good sign. So the Eagles do seem like they'll be undermanned. Now we have a, a piece up on all phly.com an email exchange. Thanks for all those who gave the input. Uh, I'm sorry to all those who gave the input that you wanted the sections. I didn't know what to do. I was pretty conflicted <laughs> story of my life. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, we discussed kind of how things would look and I expect Milton Williams to take on a bigger role with Jalen Carter out. Uh, I think Jordan Davis will be in there, especially in, in running downs. But in terms of those passing situations, I'm expecting more Milton Williams. Uh, obviously, Josh Job on the outside, uh, opposite James Bradbury. But I think the big one is safety. Uh, if Evans isn't there, my guess is Terrell Edmonds because they like the veteran. But at this point, you start going to... I don't know Brown. how much they like Terrell Edmonds. Oh, he's... Yeah. That, I mean, they don't have any other choices. If if Sidney Brown is not ready to play physically, yeah, no, but if Sidney Brown is ready to play, if Sidney Brown's in uniform, if but I think there's a difference between, between in, uniform in uniform and, and ready to play. I mean, okay. you don't want him to make his first NFL start without having a full week of practice, presumably. Fair point, and he was he was limited on Thursday. Okay, I, mean, I think I think the degree to which they like Terrell Edmonds is pretty indicative uh, or indicated by the fact that he doesn't play over Justin Evans. Maybe they just really like Justin Evans. Uh, but, yeah, I'm expecting Terrell Edmonds to start. Uh, we will see, obviously, Alamde Zacchaeus at slot wide receiver without Quez Watkins. And those are uh, – so So there's a crowded injury, injury – uh, there's a crowded injury list right now. Uh, we should also say, since we spoke last, Braden Mann was 
brought to the 53-man roster. In order for the Eagles to put Dean on the, the 53, they're going to need to put someone on IR or cut somebody. Uh, it seems like they have a potential IR candidate, whether it's Justin Evans or even Quez Watkins, we'll see. But I don't anticipate that being Darius Slay or Jalen Carter. Yeah, I would say I would put my turkeys on like 50, 52 Justin Evans IR and like 46 on Mario Goodrich released and two on the field. Yeah, I would have put it on 50. I would actually put Quez Watkins IR higher. Interesting. Yes. Okay, that's fair. Wide yeah. receiver. Yeah. And he's already been dealing with a, a hamstring. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, give him some time. I think uh, as much as I like that Jets stat, there's another stat I like just as much, which is this will now be the sixth game of the Eagle season, and it will be their sixth different starting secondary. That's a great stat, and that's a credit to Sean Desai. Uh, and I asked, well, it's a credit to me for knowing the stat, but it's a sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a credit to Sean Desai for uh, for doing, um, you know, for figuring out these adjustments. And I asked him, I asked him that that very question on on Tuesday, and it's basically they start each week, they look at the opponent, they look at who's available, and they try to figure out. What they're going to do accordingly, Zach. We have a uh, what, what kind of what kind of kicks you wearing? I actually like these shoes. They've always liked these shoes of yours. Oh, thank you. Am I supposed to like show them? I I, I don't know. They're they're they are. Hey, let's get a chant in the chat. Yeah. Like Zach, show feet. <laughs> no, they're Zach, they're show feet. Nike Air Force Ones. Pretty pretty cool. Um, thank you. You're a cool guy. Thank you. Just like the people who use Soul Savvy. We got a new sponsor, people. Soul Savvy has been around since 2018. And their mission has always stayed the same. Get sneakers into the hands of people who love them most. Soul Savvy is a sneaker community that operates in Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. There are three membership levels. You got your basic, which is free. You've got your mobile plus or mobile plus in the UK. That is $12 a month. And then you've got your premium, which is $33 a month. The premium membership includes all the mobile plus features, as you would imagine. The basic version, that's for your casual sneaker buyer. Uh, you're Bo Wolf. You're Zach Berman. You gain access to our one-of-a-kind marketplace built for you, not resellers. You got your mobile plus for the sneakerhead who is always on the go. Build a rotation of sold-out sneakers straight from your phone. And then you got the sneakerheads in premium. I'm thinking of my man Josh Tolentino in the chat. Great uh, sneaker yes. game Big from time. Josh. For the sneakerhead who is tired of paying resale, find your grails. And grow your collection in the world's biggest paid sneaker community. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Soul Savvy. Sign up for Soul Savvy by visiting soulsavvy.com slash allcity or by downloading the Drops by Soul Savvy app. Uh, speaking of which, I think we're going to have uh, Zach Rosenblatt in a little bit. But before we get to that, Zach, you talked about that Chiefs game. Did they cover? Uh, I believe the Chiefs did cover. Well, let's see. What was the line last night? I don't know. Sorry. You're the line guy. I am the line guy. I did not bet on last night's game. That's I was because you were. <laughs> that doesn't hasn't stopped you before. Uh, the NFL season, Zach, is going strong, and DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking new customers up with an offer that's even stronger. Bet five bucks on any game this week to score two hundred dollars instantly in bonus bets, and DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this October. Get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code PHLY. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code PHLY only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 in Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles in Louisiana, 21 and older age, varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football. Terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. You know how, how good the odds makers are? The point spread last night was 10 and a half. The final score was 19 to 8. Wow. Man, they know what they're doing. They probably were off on the over-under, though. I, I would assume so. Okay. Uh, before we get to Zach, we also, I got one more thing to tell you about. We've got these, these sweet 
Phillies shirts. Oh yes, up on the next uh, game you go to, the you can PHLY wear that. locker. You can check out those bad boys. The Attaboy, Bryce Harper. We all know that. Uh, what that's from. It's a good looking shirt. Mm, yeah, yeah. Credit to our design team for that one. A lot of good the journalist journalism ethics conversations going on about about that bad boy. About the Attaboy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of think pieces. I've I've read that I've, I've I've been asked my thoughts over text and I send them. Well, we talked about it on the show yesterday I, too. Yeah, I send them the the link to yesterday's show and I said make sure you check the beginning of that. And there you go. All right. Um, what are you looking forward to hearing from Zach about? Is he is he here? Oh, he's oh, here. Yeah. Great, yeah. fantastic, yeah. Mr. Rosenblatt. There he is. Our old friend. How are you, sir? How you doing, guys? We're doing very well. I'm thrilled I can hear you. Uh, you know, be, because we this is this is like a familiar looking format. The the close up shot of somebody uh, on a, on a different video podcast, and so I am curious, like what level of your planning for the week is impacted by when is Aaron Rodgers going to be on the Pat McAfee show? <laughs> Every week I forget it's even happening, and then it, it hits like whatever time I forget. I always forget what time it even goes on. Honestly, I should memorize it. And then it comes on, and then I see, like, a tweet about it. I'm like, shit, shit, shit. And I got to, like, find the, the feed on my phone. I'll be, like, walking my dog or something because you just know he's going to say something. Um, I try to ignore the non-football like stuff. Right? Like, like, yeah. There's always yeah, be something uh, that's newsy. Yeah. It, so it's, it's it maybe a little more – it's not as annoying as it might have been when he was still playing for the team, honestly, because I think – his words would have maybe had more of an impact when he was like, if he's criticizing guys while he's playing out there, whereas now he's kind of like, kind of like half analyzing the jets. You know, he did have an interesting comment about their red zone offense, which was something I actually agreed with some less interesting stuff about, you know, the other stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would say uh, everybody yeah, else in the world, it's the inverse where it's much more annoying now that he is not playing. Yeah. Yes. That's, it's annoying either way, I should say. Like, no <laughs> matter the perspective. But, um, I gotta say, this is and what then you are, 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 today, how much he's getting paid up for it too, and it's just yeah, like that. that's true. Yeah, and by the way, money. your yeah, your million dollars will be in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you. this is where uh, this is where Bo and I are are different. I hear the phrase "there could be something newsy." And I, I get excited. I'm like, oh, man, you know, <laughs> now you're talking my talk, Mr. Wolf. Uh, so uh, that that would excite me if the quarterback had had, had news items every week. Uh, but speaking about Aaron Rodgers going into the season, I, a little flex here. I actually thought the Eagles were going to start five and oh, but I thought they would then be five and one because I thought they would lose this game when Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback. And I'm, I'm watching Monday Night Football week one. Aaron Rodgers goes down, and all of a sudden, this game and the Jets season look considerably different. Uh, so what's this offense look like with Zach Wilson? Because I've, I, I've seen them on TV. I've watched them on film, so to speak. Uh, but you're there every day. What should Eagles fans know about this Jets offense without him? Oh, man. Um, so what, what I said when I was walking out of MetLife that day in week one is that it feels like the last five months didn't happen, and we're right back where we were last year. And that... That's kind of how I would describe this offense. It's like it was when Brees Hall was still healthy last year. It's their 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 way they're going to try and do it is they're not going to take any risks. They're going to run the ball a lot and they're going to try and win a low scoring, grinded out game. Like that's just they don't. I don't think the coaches have enough confidence in Zach Wilson to like try and open up the offense because I think you've seen that in the way they operate. You know, they get to the red zone. They were over. They got to the red zone five times, which means they were moving the ball mostly through Brees Hall. And once they got there, they they would go run, run, pass pretty much every time. Like it was a formula that it annoyed the crap out of me because it's just like a, if I can call it out that it's coming, then I certainly know the defense knows that it's coming. And so they were just like so scared to, to turn the ball over in the red zone and figure if we can just get out of here with three points. I don't think that's the way to be personally, um, but that that's kind of how they operate. So they, you know, on, on defense, uh, they prefer death by a thousand cuts where they're, you know, you're going to try and beat them by with the short game, getting short completions. Uh, and kind of working your way down the field slowly as opposed to giving up big plays. And then on on the other side of the ball, it's kind of the same thing. They, they're they not going to air it out very much. They might, you know, I think they should incorporate play action a little more because Zach Wilson's historically better with play action than not. But um, they're not going to they're not going to do anything too crazy. They're going to run the ball. If the running game's not working, they're going to throw it. And, and that's why you see a lot of three and outs. And that's why you see 
uh, them getting to the red zone and not closing out the drives. But they, they do have the talent on this roster. I still do believe that. But um, I think they coach a little scared right now is what I would say. It's interesting, uh, Zach. Like they, they have that talent and it's a, it, it is like a good – example of how important obviously the quarterback position is not that anybody needs that reminder <laughs> thanks Howie. Uh, well i know but like <laughs> you you know you had a good you had to go a good joe douglas piece uh, out today sort of a retrospective we're going to talk about that in a little bit but but zach and i were talking about this on the show yesterday that there is a difference between like wanting to do something and putting the resources in and getting the benefits and i think the offensive line is a good example of that right where they have put in a lot of resources to that offensive line and it's just been bad and yeah. Vera Tucker goes out for the season. That's a tough blow, but they've got a lot of moving parts. How do you see those guys lining up this week? And, and as your like uh, experienced football mind goes, how, how bad is that offensive line? Yeah. I mean, that your point is about the overall like construction. I think that's kind of lost sometimes with the fans because they say Joe Douglas hasn't done anything to build this offensive line. Like he's, he's tried. I think a lot of some of his moves you could, you could argue maybe paying Dwayne, Dwayne Brown 11 million a year, was you know ill advised, but you know also they had just lost Makai Becton for the year, so they like didn't really have a choice either. So, um, yeah. So, it, it, but in terms of how it looks, I think it's looked better better the last two weeks than it had the beginning of the season. Um, they did some reshuffling when Dwayne Brown went down, and I think this has been before Elijah Vera Tucker got hurt, which obviously is a big factor because he was their best player. I think um, they put a rookie Joe Titman in a right guard. He's been re- really really good. I think. Um, Mackay Becton's been up and down, but you know he has some talent, and he's played. You know when he's when he's at his best, he's as talented as any offensive tackle uh, they could possibly play. Lincoln Tomlinson and Connor McGovern are kind of you know just average veteran guys. And now at right tackle, they're probably going to start Max Mitchell. I would guess uh, he, he's a guy they drafted in the fourth round last year to be develop, developmental tackle, and he wasn't supposed to play at all, and he wound up starting in week one. He had like a, a blood condition that cost him most of the season, and th- he looked pretty bad in training camp, frankly. Uh, and him, between him and Billy Turner, who were kind of fighting it out for that that right tackle job because they were trying to work Mackay Becton back, they both looked pretty brutal, and that's why they they played Mackay Becton at right tackle at all because they really didn't want to do that. And then he kind of like forced his way into the lineup because how bad those guys were. I think they do like Max Mitchell. He showed some flashes last year. You hope that he's a little better this week, but it, you know it doesn't get any easier with this Eagles defensive line. So um, it's a concern, especially going against Hassan Reddick, I would say. Now, if, if, if Joe Douglas is uh, sitting there in Florham Park right now and he's watching, you know, PHLY Eagles podcast, which I imagine Joe might be doing. Sure. Uh, and he, Hi, and, Joe. Yeah, he's like, Zach, Rose, <laughs> why you keep ripping on me about the offensive line? Don't you remember when I drafted Sauce Gardner? And so that's what I, w- I want to ask you. Uh, Sauce Gardner, we were doing a draft, Bo and me, from the, uh, the two rosters, and Sauce was a high pick, obviously. Uh I was speaking to AJ Brown today and he said, he's not expecting sauce on him all the time. It sounds like yeah. sauce doesn't travel. Uh, DJ reads, obviously a, a, a real good corner. You wrote a good piece on him before the season. How do you see that, that, that matchup? Because, because the Eagles do have two marquee receivers on both sides of the field. Yeah. The, the jets are, they're pretty steadfast in there. Like we're not going to change what we do just because of what another team does. And it, that frustrates fan bases sometimes this fan base, because they, they don't like that the coaching staff doesn't adjust, but their their whole thing is we're we're going to beat you our way, and you have to adjust to us, and that's kind of how they approach it. But yeah, they they don't travel sauce, and that's been a point of contention in weeks where they play star receivers, uh, like you saw against the Cowboys in week two. CD Lamb just absolutely was destroying that that secondary, and a lot of the time it was not Sauce Gardner on him. But yeah, they they believe they have two shutdown corners and DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner. One guy can handle one side of the field, the other can handle the other side. They like Michael Carter the second as their nickel corner, and and you know you give give some help with the safety. So that jet that formula has generally worked. But then you run into teams like the Eagles, who have very fast, athletic uh, receivers who can do a little bit of everything, like Devontae Smith and and AJ Brown. And when you can start moving receivers around the field, I think the Cowboys showed the formula to beat the secondary is finding them in the middle of the field, short passes, and just kind of you know killing them that way because it. it the linebackers and the and the safeties and the nickel corners are always going to have a harder time with somebody like AJ Brown than maybe Sauce Gardner will on the outside. So I I do think that's it could become an issue in this game, especially you have Dallas Goddard also. Um, and Sauce has lined up against tight ends sometimes and done pretty well, but I don't think you can do that in this game because you have to deal with those receivers. So I, it's that's gonna, the most fun matchup uh, of this game, I think, um, just because you have probably strength on strength there to a degree, uh, receivers against corners. I I think the Eagles have 
a great offensive line, obviously, and the Jets have a great defensive line, and that's going to be a fun battle. But I, that receiver corner battle, I think, is going to be a lot of fun to watch on Sunday. The thing you said earlier, Zach, about you know when Aaron Rodgers goes down, it feels like the last five months didn't happen. I, I was thinking about that with respect to the defense, right? Because you know there was that uh, interesting scene in Hard Knocks where the defensive coordinator is like, you know, that's our guy. We've got that guy now, and it felt like the pressure on the defense was lifted a little bit, right? Last year, they had to be so good because the offense was so bad. That was part of the problem with Zach Wilson. So when this gets flipped and it's all of a sudden the pressure's on them again, they have to be a great, great defense in order for this team to be competitive. And right now they're like a a top 10 defense instead of a top three defense, which they sort of need to be. How do you feel about like they're handling the weight of that, of just like, oh, here we go again. We have to be perfect. Yeah, I, I do think there definitely was a sense that, especially, you know, I think the Patriots game, I, f- I forget the exact numbers. I think they only gave up something like 13 points or whatever it was. And so you have guys in the locker room after the game being like, well, we have to give up zero points. Like, that's our goal. And I mean, it's a pretty unrealistic goal, <laughs> frankly. So, um, you know, I, I they've, they've done a good job so far of, you know, playing it off like we just have to do our job on that side of the ball. There was absolutely frustration last year, and it kind of poured out of the locker room especially that game where Zach Wilson like refused to take responsibility and uh, put it on himself and defensive guys in particular were very angry. Uh, I think Zach's handling things a lot better. He's put stuff on himself way more often, but ultimately like it's great that you're more mature, but if the offense is still not scoring in the defense, you know, if, if we're harping on the fact that the defense struggles in the first quarter, but, but you still look up at the end of the game and, and they've only given up less than 20 points every week. Like it's hard to really blame them. Ultimately, like I, fans still get frustrated with this defense. I think they, maybe don't appreciate what they have because it feels like anytime they make a mistake, it's going to cost them the game because the offense isn't going to make up for it on the other side. And so, you know, I think that that game last week winning it was, was pretty crucial. I think things could have gone really badly. It could have gone off the rails. If Zach Wilson has a bad game, you lose to a bad team like the Broncos while the defense is playing well. Um, as you play a team like the Eagles, that's maybe less of a concern because I think everybody just kind of knows the Eagles are the better team going into this game talent wise. Now, if you get out of the bye, you have some games like the Giants and, the Chargers and the Raiders, the teams that are a little more beatable. And, and so if, if, if it goes bad again after the bye week, then I think we might be back at last year's scenario where the defense is doing their job and the quarterback is not, and then there's going to be some splintering in the locker room. Do you think there's any chance that they, they make a move for a quarterback? I think they were waiting. Um, in the beginning, they didn't bring in anybody uh, because they wanted to – they didn't want to hurt Zach Wilson's confidence, which isn't a great sign. Um, anyway, that you, you're, it's that fragile. But um, I think they were waiting to see if he could play well. And then he had that game against the Chiefs, which, you know, they might as well enshrine him based on some of the re- <laughs> reaction to it. Um, and he played okay last week. And so I think they just – they feel like they're probably not going to be able to realistically get somebody that's going to make a, you know, huge impact. You know, I don't think Kirk Cousins was ever a realistic option. Like, I don't think guys like that – I disagree with the idea that they can't sign somebody that's like a, you know, league average quarterback. I think there's guys that I, 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 you guys can appreciate this obviously as much as anybody. I I said to somebody, I never thought after that Patriots game, I never thought I would be in a position where I'm like the team I cover should sign Carson Wentz. But I got, I got to that point (laughs) Um, because it was, it was bad enough that like, I don't think Carson Wentz, maybe he's bad locker room fit, but um, he can complete some passes. So it, it's gotten better where now everybody all of a sudden is talking about Zach Wilson as if he's fixed. I'm not quite there yet. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, if they lose this game, you go into the bye with two wins. I think they knew that beginning part of the schedule was going to be hard anyway. And by the time, if Zach Wilson's bad against the giants or something, it might be too late for a, somebody they bring in to save the season. So this is kind of what they've decided to roll with. And I think some people are banking their jobs on it. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of, you know, like I said, I'm covering the same team as I did last year and it, I still, it still doesn't even feel real sometimes because we spent the whole off season getting all hyped about this whole Aaron Rodgers thing. And a week before the season, he's sitting there telling us about how he's living in a waking dream and all this stuff. And, and, and now it, it feels like it was all actually a dream and I, like none of it actually happened. So. Now uh, you, you mentioned Carson Wentz, the diehards and the sickos in the chat watching this will Remember, you you covered the Eagles, okay? I, I mean, I re- I re- I recall Zach Ertz and me looking at each other and saying, "Who's this guy who spells his name incorrectly?" Right? Um, <laughs> that's, that's a Z A C K Z A C H joke. Well, I'm aware. I already made hey, a we, we reference had... to that joke earlier. So yes, yeah, I, yeah, I I, get it. I know yeah. you didn't laugh though. So 
Yeah, I thought you could give me the gratuitous. Well, we, have, we, have, we, have, we, have every, we have every spelling at the athletic. We have Z-A-K, we have Z-A-C, yeah. Z-A-C-K. We yeah. lost the Z-A-C-H, but, you know, yeah. we, we move on with that. The Z-A-C-H <laughs> is the most wrong spelling out of so, all of them, I think. So. Yeah, so I, I was, I was going to ask you, what's your most vivid memory covering the Eagles? Oh, man. So the thing that jumps to my mind immediately um, is the double doink game, uh, Cody Parkey, because um, – I mean, it was it was a crazy it was a crazy night anyway, as you guys remember. I I vividly remember being in an Uber on the way to the stadium, and the Uber driver literally saying, "This is going to be dark," but it's what he said. He said, "I swear, if that kicker loses us the game, I'm going to kill myself." <laughs> oh my <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> um, I never check. I didn't check back with him after. I, I hope he's okay now. <laughs> but, um, uh, so that happens. Cody Parkey does that, and then my brother. Um, to thank Cody Parkey for missing the field goal, Venmo Cody Parker Parkey some money, and I thought that was hilarious, so I tweeted it, and then that went viral, and all of a sudden everybody was Venmo and Cody Parkey, and then people were creating fake Cody Parkey Venmo names and getting money from like it was it became this whole thing, and that was like just a crazy, crazy night. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I feel like the the Eagles beat being like my indoctrination into covering the NFL. I think was great. I think it's great training for anybody because it's. It's, there's nothing like it. The media group is as big as any. Like, the locker room is like chaos. Uh, and so it seems like when you go from that to like everybody always talks about the big bad New York market. And then I went to cover the Giants and Jets, and half the time the locker room is like half empty. And I'm just like, uh, or at least half empty from my perspective as somebody who used to work. You know, if you talk to somebody in the locker room, you had a risk of nine cameras coming to surround you. So um, I'm not sure if it's still like that for you guys. I imagine it is. But um, yeah, I. I a lot of fond memories of covering the Eagles. It does feel like ages and ages ago because a lot's happened since then. But um, I, I had a great time in working with you guys. I, I agree that the the Philly media is more difficult than than the New York media. Um, <laughs> here's my last thing for you on on the Hard Knocks experience, Zach, because I thought that the most illuminating scene of the whole series was. No, this I'm serious no. because you you try to think of like why is why has this team been so bad for so long. And I thought that there were warning signs of like just how much of the organization was given over to Aaron Rodgers, like the, th- the fact that like that the defense is talking about Aaron Rodgers and and so it's set up so that it could crumble. But to me, the most illuminating scene of the whole thing was the conversation between Woody Johnson and Robert Sala about Quinn and Williams and and Robert Sala is like, yeah, like because he's because he's given it his all every day in practice. He's like, that's why we gave him all that money. And Woody Johnson's like. Well, it is a lot of money. Like, if you are an owner of a team and you can't be happy about Quinn and Williams getting paid, like the guy who's one of the best players on your team at the most important position, you're going to be miserly about that. But you can also still come out and wear your chain and act like you're one of the boys. I'm like, that was the most ridiculous thing to me. I don't know what to trend. Yeah, yeah. This is like gonna, Cassianos, gonna though, what's the question? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tread lightly uh, in my response to this, but I will say that impression uh, was pretty amazing of him. Um, and I would say uh, those comments were not surprising to me. Is is would be my reaction? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> That's the best I can give you. I don't want to go. No, this has been great, Zach. I, I I look forward to seeing you this week. Keep up the great work. You can read Zach's work on the Athletic. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, we'll catch up in the press box. And a good story today on the uh, like a look back at the Joe Douglas decisions over the course of his his tenure. So uh, check that out on the Athletic. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you guys. It's always a great chat with you. Great to see you, uh, Zach. Before we get to Goose Wisely, yeah. you had a you had a message from your brother to pass along. Yeah, my so my my brother sent me a text today. Which one? Josh. Let's be specific. Yeah, okay. yeah. Credit to Josh, oldest brother, uh, and he said goes Josh Matt. Alex, Nick, Jenna. Yeah, but I'm in there as well. Yeah, so. you were the least <laughs> okay. important. It seems that way. Uh, so Josh texts me. I, I use the PHLY code uh, to buy Flyers tickets. And I said, first of all, I said, thank you. You know, I appreciate it. And I said, I'm going to mention that on the air. Uh, and the PHLY code, of course, for game time. Okay, because if you are looking to buy tickets, your favorite events should not. If you're looking to buy tickets to your favorite events, it should not be stressful. Your events, uh, sh- uh, they should not be stressful either, I would say. Um, it certainly was not stressful for Josh because he went to game time and put in the PHLY code. Game time 
is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. I'm going to the Penn State UMass game tomorrow, and I'm wondering how many people use the Game Time app to buy tickets. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. I can tell you about the flash deals and the last-minute tickets. I can tell you how it's easy to find to buy tickets for every kind of event in the area, how you can get the image of seat views and how there's the lowest price guarantee with event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Uh, but what I, I want to tell you is that my brother used it and he loved it. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time, will credit you 110% of the difference. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country. For a reason, snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PHLY for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHLY for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, it is week six for the Eagles, but week five for Goose Wisely. Man, time has flown. Time has flown. You know what? You know what's a good indication of how time has flown? I believe this is the shirt that I wore in the very first episode. Ah, in the very and first so episode. Come full circle. Five weeks I've made it back to this this shirt in the rotation. So the very first episode was yesterday. Uh, no, no, uh, no, no. Uh, no, the very first was a month ago yesterday. <laughs> okay. Um, it feels like yesterday. Yes, maybe, so September but, yes. 12th. Was That's very, not how time works. Yeah. September 12th was the very first episode. Yes. Okay. So you went a month without wearing that shirt and now it's back in the rotation. Yeah. I think I've worn this black hoodie a few times. Okay, yeah. but it's nondescript. Yeah, I mean you can, yeah, you can wear that. I think there's there's a couple of hoodies I may have worn a couple of times, but okay, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Uh, week five of Goose Wisely, Zach. I am up. <laughs> Poor three Jam to one. says time has sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jam, I appreciate you watching the show quite a bit. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Uh, so I'm up three to one. Goose Wisely, of course. We're in. We both propose two possibilities that could happen in the game that we think are of relatively equal possibility the other person gets to choose which one they want at the end we get a golden egg that we can make worth two points instead of one and here we go i do want to make one thing clear before we we we, we do this game uh, a goose wisely is our friday game of choice now uh it used to be swooper i've been I asked do miss, yeah lots of people missing swooper uh, and, and believe and, me i miss swooper too and i'm saying swooper is a three-person exercise not a two-person i agree the yeah the the the, the two-person bidding not as not as good yes so uh if now if, i'm happy to get dane is on and we, we can workshop a new sure. a new deal but. Ex exactly yeah but if if the show expands the three at some point then we would pot uh, potentially bring swooper back but right now we got you and me and we're Mm -hmm. We're, uh, yeah, we're, we're, you got somebody in mind. We're doing goose wisely. Uh, do I have someone in mind? I'm no, I'm, I'm, I'm just putting my head down doing the best work I can do. Okay. Yeah. How about Emily? I do not want her to be on the show. No. Wow. Shots fired. I hope she doesn't listen to that. I don't want her to be on the show. She would say too much. So yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. She's, she's less discreet than Emily. Her. I hope you know you have an open invitation anytime <laughs> you want, please come join us and maybe even call it. All right. Um, Bree, does it matter to you which one of us goes first? All right. I'll go first. Uh, Zach, my first one to you. Tim Boyle plays a snap mm. in this game. Tim Boyle, the Jets yeah. backup quarterback. I'm familiar with Tim Boyle. Well, maybe the audience is not. <laughs> Tim Boyle is the backup quarterback for the Jets. Or Zach Wilson is responsible for at least three turnovers in this game. Zach Wilson is responsible for at least three turnovers in this game. That's my pick. I'm saying that because... Good job. Nice job. <laughs> way to expand. Good job. Way to, way to work yourself into it. Good job. Uh, you can sort of see the wheels turning in your head. You, you had the realization, oh, wait a second, yes. I could continue yes. talking here. Zach Wilson. It, well, well uh, first off, the Eagles are a terrific takeaway team. They are plus three in turnover differential. That is 11th in the NFL. Uh, the Jets are plus one, They're, but Zach Wilson has been sack prone. He can turn the ball over. Uh, the Eagles' um, pass rush, I think, against this backup offensive line is going to get him. So there's also fumble possibilities. Hassan Reddick's terrific at strip sacks. We've seen that. I think Zach Wilson is a strip sack candidate this week. Uh, without Slay, the Eagles probably lose their best ball hawking corner. But James Bradbury had an, an interception on that same turf last year. 
Uh, Reed Blankenship has has a nose for the football, uh, and I can see. Now I don't know how many times they're going to pass it for this to hit the at the hit the three turnovers, but for Tim Boyle to play, it's going to take a quarterback injury. I don't think they're going to bench. Zach it could Wilson. be a, like a blowout in either could direction. Be a blowout, true, but if it's a blowout, I, I think they they want to give him the reps. But also potentially these could be connected. If Zach Wilson has three turnovers, maybe they bring in ah, so Tim you, Boyle. You can win both of them. Yes. I, I Tim Boyle remind that makes me think of the Mick Poyles in uh, Always Sunny with which I haven't watched in a while, but uh, that, that's the thing that's going on in my head. And I would say I have this, I have this, I, I, I thought about making a real long shot for Zach Wilson here because I have this vision in my head of there's going to be a play in this game when he is dropping back to pass and he, he is, the ball is knocked loose like a strip sack and there's like an empty, an empty hand forward oh. throw. I just, I have that vision in my mm-hmm. head of Zach Wilson in this game is going to throw the ball without the ball. So if you want to know what Bo's wildest dreams includes, it includes Zach Wilson, his hand going forward. That's right. Yes. Uh, Tim Boyle is an example to me of like how devoted they were to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. yeah. Like just like with everything else they did this yeah. offseason. We'll just- and I actually would say we didn't have this conversation with Zach Rosenblatt, but in his in his uh, rundown of the Joe Douglas moves, he had, you know, signing Aaron like the, the Aaron Rodgers trade as a good. And I'm not so sure if I would agree with that. Well, he got hurt. I mean, yeah, but he's 39 years old and they built everything around him. Like they could have, like, would it have been worse to sign Derek what Carr? Would you have done? I don't know. And you would have signed Derek Carr? I don't know that I would have, but I don't know that we can say that yeah. it was good. Like, I think that was if he win. never, like, if he never plays again. He's, have, you, have you seen this footage of how quickly he's recovering? Yeah, all, those, all that dolphin sex that he's listening to. <laughs> is that a thing? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> Chat, He's, is this a thing? <laughs> Have you heard this? Yeah, before? he listens to the sounds of <laughs> I think it's dolphins having sex. Your <laughs> reservoir of odd information has just hit. Like, I mean, you have your own reservoir you of odd information. Of I think that's more memorable than what school Damaris Johnson, what high school Damaris Johnson yeah, went to. That's okay. I, I'm guilty as charged there. That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I'm not the one doing it. That's why it's memorable. It's him. (laughs) He won't take medicine, but he will (laughs) listen to dolphin porn. (laughs) This is an all-timer, Bo. Good work. Good work. All right. Uh, Moving on. Yeah, someone said, uh, Dean says, another one of Bo's dreams. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, DeAndre Swift has the most rushing yards in the game, or Brees Hall has the most rushing yards in the game. Uh, interesting. Now, this reminds me that, uh, what, are, what are the kids being for Halloween? I haven't decided yet. It's haven't close. decided yet, yeah. getting close. Yeah. Um, Reed's got like six different ideas. Yeah, reasonable. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jane's going to be a giraffe for the second year in a row, no doubt in her mind. Mm. Casey wants to be something spooky. He wants to be something uh, scary. He's he's leaning towards like a Halloween wolf, which is probably what he's going to be. Oh, but oh, oh, like your last name? Yes, although it's more. I think it's actually like a wild crats thing. Okay. But uh, I told him if he wants to be something really, really scary, he could go with twenty one personnel. Ooh, okay. Because boy, <laughs> does that put the appear, the fear yeah. in opposing defense. That was a, a long runway to that joke. It sure but, was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're going to have to make a decision how you're going to replace uh, Darius Slay and Fletcher Cox on your roster yeah. from yesterday's draft. But I lean towards De- DeAndre Swift in this game. I think mm. okay. Brees Hall is probably a slightly better running back. I think they're both extremely good and uh, have been really good this season. But I think that the Eagles defense knows – this is really the Jets' offense. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he pops one or two long ones, but I don't. I don't see sustained success there. And I do think that from the Eagles' side of things, this is a, an advantage where where they see that they can maybe run the ball on the Jets. I think not. They're not scared of AJ Brown and Devontae Smith against TJ Reed and Sauce Gardner. But I think we have seen uh, the last couple weeks. It's been more passing. I wouldn't be surprised if they lean a little bit more on DeAndre Swift in this game. So I'm going DeAndre Swift. So then I have Brees Hall from Earth. 
Iowa State. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. I know. I wanted to see if you listen to what I say. Well, yeah, I know that. I thought you were going to give me something different. Okay. <laughs> You're up. Okay. Uh, speaking of Brees Hall, we, we have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm zeroing in on Brees Hall here. Mm. Brees Hall is responsible for the longest play from scrimmage for either team in this game. Or Brees Hall has no runs over 10 yards in this game and is completely bottled up by the Eagles' run defense. I am curious, in terms of the defensive line, how much the Jalen Carter absence makes. Because I think we have maybe not spent enough time talking about how, how impressive he has been as a run defender when we've put so much focus on how good he's been as a pass rusher. Yeah, it certainly affects them. Uh, and he's, he's a, a true three-down defensive tackle. I expect Jordan Davis is going to have to have a big game running the ball, so we will see that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not running the ball, stopping the run. If he was having a big game running the ball, that would be a new wrinkle to the offense. Jordan Davis would have, would have to have a big game stopping the run. Uh, and Milton Williams, I, I think, more in passing situations. But Jalen Carter gives you both of those. So that is going to affect them. And I'm going to take uh, Brees Hall for, the, for, the, for the, the longest play. He's had runs this year. of uh, He's had three really long runs this year, an 80-plus yarder. 70-plus uh, yarder. Yeah, 70-plus yarder and a 40-plus yarder. And if he gets to that second level, how good are, are the Eagles tackling? How good is their back end tackling? The Eagles, like we discussed on the show yesterday, have not really seen a running back this good. I, I like Ramadre Stevenson, but Brees Hall's more explosive. They haven't really seen this ex explosive back. So I'm going Brees Hall, longest play of the day, because I do think he'll get a run of over 10 yards. Okay. You're up. So my one here is Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat combined for more sacks than all Jets. Or Than all Jets? Yes. Okay. Or the Jets have more sacks than the Eagles. Interesting. Okay. Let's see. Now, I don't think that the Jets are going to try to pass the ball too much, but they, okay. that may not be up to them if the game script exactly. uh, the gets out of their the way. I do think that the Jets will be able to get after Jalen Hurts a little bit. I'm going to say, huh, this is tough. Because I, that's I, a good one, right? I, it is a good one. I don't love either Thank of them you. because I, uh, you know, I think Fletcher Cox could get in on the action. Uh, I think Brandon Graham is playing well right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets in on the action. Orlando Scandrick does a good job against the Jets. We all remember that. Orlando Scandrick's um, not on their team. I know this is, but okay. I'm calling back to that nine sack game. I do remember who that. was the quarterback for that game. I have it in my head. Uh, Listen. For the sake of the show, you're getting you're getting on me on on dolphin sex, and you can't even remember who the Jets quarterback was in that game. Come on, uh, who was it again? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I think it was okay. Luke Falk. Yes, that sounds about right. Yep. Okay. Um, I will say, give me Reddick and Sweat. I don't feel great about that, but I I do think that Becton and Max Mitchell are there for the taking. Certainly, Zach Wilson is there for the taking, and I. I don't think that the Eagles are going to – if 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 their pass protection is not holding up, I think they have other things to go to. So I don't think they're going to just have to continue being under siege if that's the way that the matchup is going. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, I'm going to go with a uh, bit of a bit of a throwback to the swoopers of old. Mm. A kick in this game, a kick or a punt, hits a post, an upright, or a pylon. Okay, so it could be a punt hitting a pylon. It could be uh, a kick hitting uh, the uprights. Or the Eagles throw basically the exact same screen that they threw to Quez Watkins last week, but they do it to Alameda Zacchaeus. So there is an Alameda yeah. Zacchaeus wide receiver screen with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith blocking in front. Although, let's say for the sake of the, of the item, it doesn't have to be the, those two guys blocking in front, but they throw a wide receiver screen to Alameda Zacchaeus. OZ wide receiver screen. I'm expecting it. Uh, <laughs> I think that's that's kind of like a staple play to to pick up some quick yards, get those guys involved. Um, and also, I don't know what the probability is for hitting the post or the pylon. Uh, but we're not expecting Quest Watkins to play, so OZ will, will be on the field more often. Uh, I can see that being a uh, – I, I can see that hitting. Okay. 
You're up. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the injury report because I'm seeing stuff in the comments to see if the final report came out. That's why I might seem a bit distracted. But uh, the Eagles have not released their official report yet. Uh, A.J. Brown reaches 100 yards again, or A.J. Brown has fewer receiving yards than Garrett Wilson. So, for context, A.J. Brown mm. has reached 100 of receiving yards uh, in three consecutive games. So, this would be four consecutive games if he did it. That's my math there. Thanks for selling my joke. Ooh. Was that a joke? <laughs> yes. Obviously, it goes three to four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I This is tough. I, I do think that this is going to be a Devontae Smith game just because of the uh, rabbit-eared nature of, of the game plan. And I I, I mean, I, I think Garrett Wilson is awesome. Eh, maybe, but with no Darius Slay, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take A.J. Brown has fewer receiving yards than Garrett Wilson in okay. this game because I think everything for them should flow through Garrett Wilson and, you know, A.J. Brown could have a big game but still have, you know, 93 yards receiving. So give me... Give me the Garrett Wilson end of this deal. Okay, so then I have the A.J. Brown end of this deal. To give you A.J. Brown's numbers on the season, 35 catches for 541 yards. He's averaging 15 and a half yards per catch. Uh, he's been awesome in recent weeks. It seems like he can't be covered, and he's not going to be covered the whole game by Sauce Gardner, like Zach Rosenblatt said. Okay, my last one for you, Zach. N'Kobe Dean plays every defensive snap. In okay. this game, he comes back from injured reserve and is the guy nonstop, does not leave the field. Or we talked about the Eagles leaning into the fun a little bit. There is a coordinated team celebration at some point. This is going to require at least three people involved. At least three people. Yes. Okay. Uh, so he, last week's when the, with the tight ends, that would have boat. counted. Yeah. Yeah. I'm which going was not a very good one, I thought. But no? You're not a row the boat guy? I feel like they're running out of ideas. Oh, well, that's a challenge then. AJ, if you're watching this right now, both thinks you're running out of ideas. DeAndre, if you're watching this right now, both thinks you're running out of ideas. I don't think Jalen's watching this right now, but both Probably thinks not. you're running out of ideas. Aaron, uh, if you're watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little concerned that you know exactly what it sounds like. Don't we all? You guys have the same taste. Um, I'm going with coordinated team celebration. Okay. Uh and you want some analysis on this? I think that <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know if Dean's gonna play every snap, but I I do think that when the Eagles score, they like to have they like to have something up their sleeve. My only question is if it's uh, solo or if they bring three people into it. <laughs> so <laughs> mm, interesting. Not three dolphins. That's what you're laughing about. No, I laughed at your face. <laughs> you laughed at my face. My face is funny to you. I look like a clown. I amuse you. I left at your reaction when I said they bring three people into it. Yes. Oh, okay. So, okay. I feel like whales could be interesting too. Like I don't know what type of uh, sounds you're interested in, but <laughs> you you got the, uh, the the sea mammals on lockdown in terms of their sounds. So a whale is sitting at the bar. Yes. Two whales are sitting at the bar, and yes. and one of the whales, the first whale, says to the other. <laughs> and the second whale says to the first whale, "Go home, Bob. You're drunk." Oh. I like that joke. Thanks. <laughs> okay, you're up. You have as, one last one. As a fan of comedy, yeah. Uh, the last one here: the Jets have fewer yards per carry than Nick Castellanos' home runs against the Braves. So that's four. Or <laughs> I think it's. It's funny to uh, – well, go ahead. Or Jake Elliott kicks more field goals than Bryce Harper home runs versus the Braves, which is three. I like these because it, when usually when we do these, there are two things that are up for grabs, whereas this time you've just said a number, but you've used a different description yes. for the number. Yes. Like, so well, – because I originally had this for the game coming up. Okay. But then I was like, but we, we can't have scoring when we do the show on Monday, right? So I wanted to make sure that – we had the scoring settled. So I did the games from yesterday. But I wanted to include the Phillies in here somehow. Okay. So the Jets have fewer than four yards per carry. Yes. Or Jake Elliott has at least four field goals. It has to be more. Yes. It's not equal yes, to. Yes, correct. Which would get into the red zone offense discussion yes. that we've talked about. Ah, you see, that you're doing it now. Yeah. You're, you're, you're building on it. You're, you're seeing the second, the second layer. 
Brees Hall is averaging what, like seven yards per carry yep. or something like that. Seven point four thereabouts. I'm going to go with the Jets have fewer than four yards per carry, as opposed to Jake Elliott has four field goals. Four field goals is a lot of field goals. It is a lot of field goals. He leads the NFL in field goal attempts this year. Worth noting. Uh, which one would you have taken? I probably would have taken that because four field goals says a lot. Okay. Uh, speaking of animal sex, um, shout out to uh, uh, a different Emily, D5 Emily, who I believe... I would hope it's a different Emily. Found yes. out that... <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the sound of the raptors in Jurassic Park yeah. is actually the sound of tortoises mating. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So good to know. Next <laughs> For, time you watch Jurassic Park. It's a dynamite drop in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have, do we have one more? Uh, we do, but we have to yeah. do our golden eggs first. Oh, okay. So yeah. let, me run we'll down, let me run down our choices, okay. and then you think about what your golden egg is going to be. I have Tim Boyle plays a snap. You have Zach Wilson has at least three turnovers. I have DeAndre Swift leads the game in rushing. You have Brees Hall leads the game in rushing. I have Brees Hall has no carries of more than 10 yards. 10 would not count here. It has to be more than 10. You have Brees Hall is responsible for the longest play from scrimmage. I have Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat have more sacks than the Jets as a team. You have the Jets have more sacks than the Eagles. I have a kick hits the post or the pylon. You have there is an Alameda Zacchaeus screen. I have Zach Wilson. No, no. Garrett Wilson has more receiving yards than A.J. Brown. You have A.J. Brown has at least 100 yards. I have N'Kobe Dean plays every snap. You have a coordinated celebration. And I have the Jets have fewer than four yards per carry. You have Jake Elliott hits at least four field goals. I'm going Brees Hall leads the game in rushing. Over DeAndre Swift. Yes. Okay, interesting. Because that's one where you would imagine it would be one of the two. So this is, this is one of us is going to get two points. The other yeah. one's going to get none. Poor game theory. And I will take... I'm going to take... Da, 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 da. One that I don't think you're going to get. I will take the Jets. I'll, I'll take the Elliott field goals because I don't want you to get two points on four Elliott field goals. So I will take the Jets are under four yards per carry. Okay. Bet on the actual change in the, the run defense. Good test for them. Go ahead. Tell me about Foco. <clears throat> yeah, I, I do want to tell you about Foco because if you look behind us, we're getting a lot of compliments on how how nice our, our, our set is. And our set would not look good as good if not for FOCO. FOCO is a leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line that includes apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, novelty items, and more. It's the best officially licensed gear for all sports and fandoms. I'm going to the Penn State game this weekend. I'm going to see tailgaters, and I imagine they'll be wearing FOCO um, uh, stuff there and using FOCO because it's football season and tailgating season and overalls, hoodies, hats, sunglasses, bags, everything you need for a game. FOCO has hooked the PHLY up and provided awesome pieces for our sets. FOCO always has our back for Philly sports and they have yours to get the best gear around by using the link in our description for all non presale items. Use the promo code PHLY for 10% off. All right, Zach, it's time to get to our crystal bald eagle predictions. We've talked about this matchup. Spread right now is what, seven? Spread is seven. Spread is seven. What's the over-under? Uh, it's, you'll see when I make my pick. <laughs> All okay. right, well, why don't you give it to us then? Okay, uh, so going into the season, I believed that the Eagles would be 5-0. and oh, Like I said, the Zach Rosenblatt. And they would lose to the New York Jets to be 5-1. and one. That was when Aaron For the Rodgers, first time in franchise history. That was when Aaron Rodgers was playing. Aaron Rodgers is not playing. Without Rodgers, this is a different Jets team. Uh, I think that this is a really good Jets defense. The Eagles are obviously missing some key pieces. I just don't know if they have the offensive firepower to beat the Eagles. The Eagles are going to have to beat themselves in order to lose this game. But I think the Jets can run the ball, even though the Eagles have the top-ranked rush defense in the NFL. Uh, so I'm curious to see Brees Hall's output. And I think the Jets defense makes it tough. That's the – but. But if, like I said, on allphly.com, there's a reason why the Eagles are seven-point road favorites. I think the Eagles force turnovers. I think they have five sacks in this game. I think the offense does just enough to maintain a decent margin throughout the game, a steady lead, and the Eagles advance to 6-0, and and excitement builds for next week's game against the Miami Dolphins. I have this score, Eagles 24, Jets 17. What do you think the over-under is? 41. Boom. Wow. You know me after five years. You know what's interesting? You spend so much time around this team. You spend so much time thinking about this team, mm -hmm. analyzing this team in your mind, reporting on this team, 
And when it comes down to making your pick, you just take exactly what Vegas gives you. You know, I vividly remember growing up, my grandfather, uh, I, I was in the backseat of his car. We're going to Atlantic City, okay, and I, you see the casinos. And they're, they're like cathedrals. They're amazing, you know? And he, he, he said to me, they don't build those casinos because people win, right? Vegas knows what they're doing with the point spreads. So I, I know a lot about what college these guys went to, game plans, all these things. Vegas, they're real good with their lines. Look at last night, the 11 points. You know, so I, I trust but not, them. But not the over-under. But not the over-under. True. But I actually, this, this might make you laugh. You, it, it, it might, you might say it's on brand. In seventh grade for my science fair, uh, I did um, all the, this was before you, you had data like you have now. Okay. okay. My science fair project was how often the favorites win and how often the underdogs win. Okay. And I, what was your sample size? It was the entire season. I calculated. And so in the inquire every week, I would uh, look at the point spreads and I would, I, I would mark it down. And I made like a whole, you know, we had like, it was the poster board that had like three sides to it. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I know what you're talking uh, about. The uh, folds. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, so that was my seventh grade science fair project. It didn't win, but. I would imagine it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I really had fun doing it. I mean, yeah, it's more of a note-taking exercise than yes, yes, science. Yes, exactly. Okay. But, but I had fun. I had fun. I once did a, uh, a project in biology class. I don't know where this it was is going. It was, in, it was like everybody had to do the evolution of something. Mm. I did the evolution of the baseball glove. Ah, okay. And one of the things was my dad had brought home a, a milk carton baseball glove, which is what they play with in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it was like a, like a cool thing. And that was like on the poster board. And my science teacher, Mr. Rue, threw it out. He threw out the glove because he didn't, he didn't care to read the thing. And he just thought it was an empty milk carton. I'm still pissed about it. I can tell. Yeah, that, that, that is bad. Mr. What Rue, the hell? Mr. Rue, if you're watching, I'm sorry, man. Um, I'm sorry. About no, that. if you're watching, yeah. uh, apologize again. <laughs> yes, yes. What the hell? You can Because not him. only was that a mean thing to do, it proved that you didn't even read <laughs> the the project. Mr. Rue, you can find him at Bo at allphly.com. What the hell? Still mad. Okay. Your I've been carrying that one for a long time. I can tell. I'll, I'll carry that one to my grave. San Pedro de Macariz. What are we doing? Uh, okay. My prediction here is... Um, I think the Eagles will have a little bit of trouble moving the ball at, at points in this game. I think this is going to be a, a defensive struggle at times. I think the Eagles' defense has enough moving parts that they're going to give up a couple long touchdowns. Um, I don't think that the Jets are going to move the ball steadily in this game, but I think that there will be a couple big plays given up because of the moving parts in the secondary and uh, because Brees Hall has that big playability, and so does Garrett Wilson. I have the Eagles winning this game handily, but with a few moments of uh, fear, I guess, in the, in the hearts of Eagles fans that this could really be a, a game which they're there. overlooking. Yeah. Uh, so give me the Eagles 23-14, a game that is close for the first three quarters, but the Eagles pull away at the end. Okay. 23-14. DeAndre Swift is the player of the game for the Eagles. And that would be good for your picks. It would. Yes. And it would be good for your uh, belief in the city of Philadelphia. Po uh, I was going to say post-game story. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out the best way to craft that post-game story. If, it's, if it should be a player feature, if it should be like 10 things, it should be scenes from the locker room. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to give me feedback. <laughs> I would, I would <laughs> vote for scenes from the locker room. Zach at all PHLY. You've got all week to give us your thoughts. That's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm still working all that out. But appreciate that. Okay. All right, well, that'll do it for this episode of the PHLY Eagle. Well, go ahead. What do you got? I'm going to pump up the post. The, the pre, are you about to do that, the pre and post? Yeah, of course. Okay, perfect. Okay. That's when I say we're going to talk to you the okay. next time perfect. we're going to talk to you. That's, that's part of the whole outro. Outro, perfect. Yeah, okay. okay. Anything else you want to No, I just want to make sure on? you get due credit for, I mean, the numbers for the post are great. Let's, let's keep building those. Well, you're involved too, my friend. Absolutely. I'll be chiming in from uh, MetLife. What's your, uh, did you make any stops on the way up to MetLife or, or are you going, you're going straight there? Probably going straight there, but there's a pizza place in Cranberry uh, that's really good. 
but I don't know if it's open. Well, although this is a later game, so maybe you because might, yeah. typically we got the one o'clock, so it's not open then. Um, so maybe there's a pizza place in, in Cranberry. Cranberry, huh? Yeah, Cranberry. I think it's called Cranberry Pizza, actually. Easy to remember. Easy, to, easy to remember. So it's, it's a little off the Jersey Turnpike, but it's worth it. I and uh, I've tried the. I, I go now before these Thursday preseason games that the Eagles would have, and I I, I would stop there for like an earlyish dinner. Um, so that's probably where I'll, I'll go, but I'll be a little tired because I am coming back. If anybody hasn't heard, Zach is going to the Penn State. <laughs> I'm UMass going to the Penn State game this weekend, game this weekend. and uh, I'll, I'll get back pretty late Saturday night, and then get in the car and head up the Turnpike on Sunday morning. Well, we look forward to your coverage, which you can read on allphly.com, and of course, you can watch the pregame show and the postgame show right here on Sunday. It's a four o'clock game, or a four? Is it a four twenty-five game 425. or four o'clock? So our uh, kickoff show, I think, will be live at 345, Jamie Lynch and me, and then the postgame show with Jamie and I again, and also welcoming Zach for some insight on the locker room, what Nick Sirianni says, the eyes from the press box, all that good stuff. So everybody enjoy the weekend. Beautiful weather here in Philadelphia for Zach and Bree and Flipper. I'm Bo. We thank you for listening. We will talk to you on Sunday. And as always, we love you. (laughs) 